So I was gonna, I was preaching a message out of uh, Second Kings and Second Chronicles because I don't know if you've noticed, but in the Word of God, there's a lot of parallels that God's given us, like with the Gospels. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and and John. There's there's a lot of parallels with the stories and the different things that Jesus did and what He said. And you find the same thing in the Old Testament, believe it or not. Uh, in Daniel, the book of Daniel, the first half of Daniel is kind of repeated, but just in a different way at the end of uh, the second half of Daniel. And then you find the same thing with First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. The Kings passages, the stories are retold or, or vice versa in Chronicles. And so... Uh, I was going to get into one of those stories because it was so, it's just so awesome and the Lord had been putting it on my heart for quite some time. But uh, after hearing all that tonight, I don't know, I just feel my spirit that, uh, that I need to go in a different direction. So who am I to argue with that? So I want to start and uh, read out of John chapter 1, starting with verse 1. John 1, 1. I got nine back there supporting you. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Because of what we just read right there, that's the reason that anyone can go out there and do what was done, what was shared tonight. Because the light came into the world. Because Jesus Christ manifested himself and came into the world. He, he left his throne so that he could come down here and he could do the most important thing in human history. And because of that, the darkness didn't always comprehend it. And, and even those that were out there at the Mardi Gras parade, they didn't necessarily comprehend every detail of what was going on. But there's something about the human spirit. Right, right. There's something about your spirit. It, it could be a dead spirit. It could be a spirit that's alive, that's come into connection with the Holy Spirit. But there's something about that human spirit that when, when it's near the presence of the Lord, when it's near the power of God, when it's near the word of God, there's something that stirs up on the inside. I think you know what I'm talking about. There's something that just starts to stir deep, deep, deep within. And what I've come to know is that I was dead. And then one day I became born again. And when I became born again, I realized at a later date, to put it in these words, that he became the Holy in my spirit. He was and is today the life in my flesh. He is the super in your natural. And that is what has happened when you have become born of the spirit. And so being salt of the earth is really what it's all about. What we were just hearing, that was salt. That was the true meaning of what Jesus said when he said in Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And so because Jesus came into the world, he became the light of the world. Because of that, now we are able to also be light. We're able to be salt in our world, in the earth around us. And I started relatively young, you know, as a young adult, sharing my faith. And where it really just started to happen was when I was working offshore on a supply boat. And there was an atheist chief mate on that boat. And so it really shaped me to my core. I realized at that time just how little I did understand about God's word, even though I was raised in, in, in the faith. I couldn't find what I was wanting to find in the scripture. And I was trying to debate this guy. And I mean, he was vile, just as vile as vile gets. I mean, he was disgusting and he was trying to be, and he was planning things around that boat to, to trip me up and try to get me to stumble and fall into sin. And it was just a really, really, really rough time in my walk with God, but it was a pivotal, it was a pivotal time in my walk because while that was going on, that was also the time when I began to worship God on the back deck of that boat in a way, in a manner like I never 
never really understood because it was coming from the depths of my soul. It was coming from my heart. I really connected to God, connected with God on a level like I had never known before. And I had been prayed over many times. I had been in many church services, sang many songs at home in the church, but never did I... And that's when I really experienced the, the raw presence and the power of the Holy Spirit was on the back deck of that work boat, that supply boat. You know, this time offshore, we, we've been doing a lot of Bible studies offshore, and we have at least a minimum of, uh, I believe it's five Bible studies, four or five Bible studies, what we normally do. And then when, the, when, when we all get really, really excited and start really getting into the topic, sometimes we'll have as many as eight or nine Bible studies, but the Lord has been really moving out there on this offshore platform, and we've been praying together as a small group. And there's guys on the opposite crew right now that are out there, and they do Bible studies. So I've worked over some. That's why I'm coming in, uh, you know, with only, with only uh, one week to be at home. But I worked over, and so I got to work with that crew and got to spread some of that salt over with that crew, too and challenge some people and started to find out there's guys out there that used to go to the Bible study, but they don't go anymore. And so I just started to encourage, you know, and try to uh, push a little bit, give a little nudge, like, man, you need to go to that Bible study. You need to be a part. God wants unity. Jesus died on the cross and he paid the price so that we could be one. We could be one spirit. He wants us to be one in the spirit. And what Pastor Matt was saying earlier is really, that, that's really the truth. The truth. We need to be one. We need to be one in the spirit. So he says in Matthew 5, verse 13, he says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And that really sums it up. That is the reason why Jesus had to come, was to save us and to bring us into fellowship with him. And then so that we could shine our light so that there would be others who could come into fellowship with him. It's a real simple message. But without Jesus coming to earth, without Jesus going to the cross, without Jesus being crucified, without Jesus being having to suffer, without Jesus taking those stripes and every aspect of that crucifixion, every aspect of his suffering, his death, his dying, the shedding of his blood. I, I, I've come recently to look at it in a deeper way for me to where his body represents his suffering because every stripe, every nail, every uh, stick that was used to beat him, the pulling out of his beard, the suffering, it was affecting his flesh. And the flesh that Jesus was wearing that day, I believe the flesh was crying out, please, I mean, my God, would you just give in? I mean, we can end this all right now. It was the suffering of Jesus that his flesh endured, but it was the blood of Jesus Christ because the life of the flesh is in the blood, right? It's the life that's in the blood, the Bible tells us. So when, when the blood is spilled out, the life is gone. And that's what Jesus did when he died. He had shed enough blood for his life to go from this earth. And then he went on into the lower parts of the earth. And because of that, because of that, because of him being the light of the world, because of him not being ashamed. Hebrews talks about how looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, it was a joy. It was a joy for him to come down and to go up to Calvary. It was a joy for him. He endured the cross and he despised the shame. And when when it really clicked for me on that, it was like he despised the shame. He despised it. Think about it. He despised it. He hated the shame. The very shame and the very pride that would have kept him from, from coming down and going up to Calvary and dying on the cross. He was ashamed of the shame. 
That's what it was. He was ashamed to even be ashamed because the purpose and the plan that the Father had designed from the very beginning before the foundations of the world was for you and for me so that we could be a part of the kingdom. And by everyone that went out there and everyone that prayed for those that went out there, everyone that participated on some level, what you were doing, you were, you were playing a significant role in this. And I want to encourage you today because he, uh, Pastor Matt was talking about uh, Brother Lance Rao, the guy that uh, was carrying the cross all across the United States. He had come through Morgan City. Uh, many years ago where I first met him. And I'm going to tell you that that brother, the Lord used him in a really powerful way to impact me because I was already sharing my faith to some degree and on some level of my job, but there was to go out on the streets. That was like another level for me. I wasn't doing that. I'd never done that. And I never even really imagined myself doing that. But he come into that church and I connected with him rather quickly and started to talk to this brother and he challenged me. He really challenged me. And I, without really knowing what I was getting myself into fully, you know, I just said, okay, let's do it, man. And so when we went out there, I was scared to death. I was so afraid. I was like, I don't know. I'm going to be stumbling over my words. I don't know what's going to happen here. And I'm going to tell you, the first person that I went to on the streets of Morgan City with this Lance Rao, the first person that I actually spoke to, that I actually shared my faith with on the streets of Morgan City in my own hometown, I could feel the weight. I could feel the darkness, of the heaviness, the oppression on the outside, putting pressure on me, trying to, to intimidate me and trying to overcome me and overwhelm me with fear. And I was thinking in my mind, like, how am I going to do this? Like, I'm, I'm so afraid right now. Like, I'm just going to make a fool out of myself. And when I opened my mouth, I, I'm, I'm, I remember it just like it was today. The chains, I could feel the spiritual chains just snap. I could feel that oppression just scatter. The darkness just whoo, gone. And, and, and I stumbled a little bit. I did. But I just kept rolling through it. Just keep rolling through it. And then as time went on and I, I kept talking and then I went and talked to someone else, it just grew and it became stronger. And I'm going to tell you, if I had not stumbled through the first one, I would have never gotten to where I am today. I can tell you that. Let me tell you something we just happened offshore this last time. There was a guy that uh, was working on the opposite crew and uh, one of the supervisors that's over that crew, he has been coming to Bible study. God's done an, a powerful work in this guy's life. So the guy that he, he invited to come to the Bible study and brought over to his crew came and the second Bible study that he attended, we were just talking about, we were on a different topic and just, I could just see he was asking questions and he was really wanting to know more about the new birth, being born again, being saved. And so the whole conversation, everything just turned toward that. I mean, the Holy Spirit was speaking. There was no question. That's what needs to be discussed. And so we talked about John chapter three, what Jesus talked to Nicodemus about and explained the born again experience. And this guy just really opened up and poured his heart out and said, you know, Aaron, he said, for, for over a year now, he said, I don't know what it is, but God, is, I just feel like I'm going to change. I'm going to change. I, I, something's changing in me. I said, well, you need to seal that. <laughs> we, need to, we need to make sure that happens. I said, and so I just, I didn't pray the prayer with him. I just, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm just really not about that. I'm sorry. I don't want to lead someone in a sinner's prayer. I want him to right there, look me in the eyes and make a confession. I'll coach you through it. Let's talk about what you have to believe. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Do you believe that? Yeah, you believe that? And then he would say it. He would actually repeat what I said. He made a call. He said, I believe Jesus is the son of God. I said, you got to believe that he came down from heaven in the flesh, in the flesh. And that he went up to that cross on Calvary and he died and he bled there and he paid the penalty for your sins. You've got to believe that. He said, I believe that. I believe Jesus came down from heaven, came to earth, went up to Calvary, died on the cross. And I mean, he just went along with it. I wouldn't ask him to repeat after me, but he kind of did. And it, we weren't eyes closed. We were just talking. We were talking. And he made a public confession. And, and, and then we prayed, and I just prayed over him, and I said, look, man, I'm going to pray. you got to repent. you got to turn. Whatever it is in your life 
that has been pulling you away from God, you have got to renounce it. That's you right. have got to repent of it. Right. You have got to reject it. You have got to put it behind you. And you have to about face turn the other way and go to Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. And so, man, I said, when I pray, I said, you put it in your own words. Do not repeat after me. That's right. Put it in your own words. Let it come from your heart. And so we pray, and I'm telling you, the power of God came down in that room. And then the room that we do it in is called the ICC room. It's like the incident command room. When we have fire drills, if there's a real incident, uh, there's certain people that go, that the leadership goes in that room, and, and that's where we conduct instructions and all for lifeboats and abandonment and things like that. And that's the room we do it in. So it's just really powerful right next to the control room control room and there's guys in the control room always coming up to the window and seeing who's there and checking things out and so the spirit of God is moving offshore in a powerful way there was another guy in the same crew that started to come and he's a Filipino guy ironically and this guy I'm telling you very quiet very shy but, but really um, really powerful so he started to share some of his testimony so he's He's worked in other countries. He's worked in Saudi Arabia, and he was talking about that. When he was working in Saudi Arabia, he said uh, that they were instructed not to bring any religious material. And he, he was like, I'm bringing my Bible. I mean, I've got to worship the Lord, and I've got to read my Bible. And he doesn't have a phone, I don't believe. It doesn't look like it. I've never seen him with a phone. So he got one of those small New Testament Bibles, and he stuck it down in his shoe. And... Uh, when they're going through customs, they made him, you know, take his shoes off. And he's telling us this story. He said, so I took my shoe off and I covered the hole. I said, see? And they said, yeah, you're good. And so I hurry up and put it right back on. And the Bible's now underneath his foot <laughs> inside the shoe. I mean, he just totally played it off. And I mean, this guy goes, he gets there in Saudi Arabia and he meets with his work group and he finds out, you know, where Christians are meeting at and and his roommate was telling him, look, now you're talking about going to have a Bible study. He said, you know, if you get caught, they will not treat you very good. You will be punished. You will be thrown into prison and you will probably be beaten. And he said, I, I'm going to worship God. Like, I'm not not going to worship God. I'm going to this Bible. I'm going to this worship meeting. And so he went every day and every single day. That same guy, roommate, kept telling him. Are you sure you want to go, man? I don't know if this is a good idea. Like this, it, something could happen to He went every single day, every single day, every single day. And, and so after, uh, you know, my crew left to go home and I stayed the extra week, uh, we, we kind of reconnected. He, he saw that uh, we do a lot of Bible studies and then the other crew, they just do one, you know, once a week. And so he was asking me, are we going to do a Bible study tomorrow? And so I said, yeah, let's do a Bible study tomorrow. So we got together, just me and him. And um, man, it was so powerful. Uh, we, we looked at some scripture about uh, what Jesus uh, is going to do when he judges the sheep and the goats. And uh, after that was over, I asked him, I said, man, I said, look, I've never had to face anything like what you faced when you went to Saudi Arabia. And that really ministered to me. That really spoke to my heart. And I said, I, I, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray with me. Pray that God will give me the courage and give me the strength that I would be willing to suffer. That I would be willing to endure like you did. I said, because you know, it's easy for us to say what we would do. It's easy for us to think we would do a certain thing, but we don't really know. You know, I mean, I... I really want to believe, I do, I, I trust me, I want to believe that I would stand firm, I would be strong, but I'm just not going to be presumptuous about that. I keep praying, me and Chari, we pray a lot, and when we do pray many, many times, we pray, God, prepare us, prepare us to endure persecution, prepare us for affliction, prepare us to suffer. Lord, if we don't have to suffer, nothing has been lost. No harm, no foul. But God, prepare our hearts. Make our hearts willing. Make our hearts willing to endure. To endure the struggle. To endure facing it, you know. We don't know what's right around the corner. We don't know what's coming. We have no idea. And the thing is, my job is so stressful. My job, this is the most stressful job I've ever had. It really is. 
And I was always told working on the drilling rigs, man, if you ever get on a production platform, it's so laid back, you don't hardly have to do anything. And look, I was just looking for a job. <laughs> I wasn't trying to find a job where I don't have to do anything, but this job is like three times more difficult and busier than on the drilling rigs. And so I told God one day, I said, Lord, I said, there is no way I can stay here and keep doing this. I, I mean, it was just, I was just, I felt like I was, there, there was some times when I was really getting in the flesh. The enemy was getting the best of me. And I, when I would just kind of get over myself and, and, and you know, put the, that, that voice of the flesh aside and start really listening to what God was saying, all I could hear was, you need to learn how to endure. You need to learn how to seek my face. When you are being when you are struggling, when you're frustrated, when you're irritated, when you're beside yourself, when you're all up in your, your flesh, you need to learn how to seek my face in that moment. You need to learn when it's rising up, you need to learn how to put it down by the power of the Holy Spirit through the blood of what Jesus Christ did. You need to know, you need to know how to walk in that. And if you just run and leave every time something like this comes, you're never gonna learn the lesson. Come on, son, get with it. So I had to learn that sometimes I didn't need to go get something to eat. You know, when it was break time, I needed to go pray. I needed to go cry out to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. The power of the Holy Spirit has moved so greatly on this platform right now to where now we're doing a prayer meeting on Wednesday nights. It's not just a Bible study, but now it's a prayer meeting. And now it's gotten to a point to where some guys that I don't know if they're ashamed or they're just uncomfortable, they, they kind of got together and one of the guys that's in the Bible study with me is starting to go with them. And in the mornings, they're getting up every morning. They're, they're getting together, just about five or six of them. And they're reading the scripture and then they're opening up and making themselves vulnerable with each other and they're praying together. And I'm like, wow, praise God, because he's answering our prayers. We've been praying for this, praying that God would pour out his spirit on this platform. And he's beginning to do it. And it's going sideways in a good way. And so praise God for that. So I, and some of those guys that come to me in the warehouse where I work and they're, they're telling me all these stories and, and, you know, I'm just trying to encourage them, you know, just encourage them, man, keep doing it. It's good, man. It's good. Praise God. And God is just moving. And so don't underestimate what God has put in you. Don't underestimate the salt that you have, that you carry, the flavor that Christ has put in you. Don't, don't let, don't, don't throw it to the side and treat it like, you know, well, I'm not really going to do anything. You know, if you feel, well, I'm new in Christ or I haven't been doing this for very long. God wants you to step out. If you don't ever step out, you will never walk in the spirit. You will never walk and, and you'll never be able to overcome the struggle if you never fight with it by putting faith in what Christ has done for you. God wants us to do that. God wants us to struggle. He wants us to struggle. You do realize that if I'm never struggling, I'll never go to God. I'll never be prompted to go to God. And so the struggle is actually a good thing, as, I, as crazy as it sounds. It's a very good thing. It keeps me going back to God. And, and I told the Lord another day, I was like, Lord, if, I can't, if we can't do these Bible studies, if, we can't, if, if this ever has to stop, I got to go because this job is not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But what is worth it is souls are being touched. Amen. Lives are being changed. And so there was another guy. Uh, he's, he's a Filipino. He's in the catering crew. So the catering crew, the majority are Filipinos. And um, I mean, y'all, I'm not the only one who has a Bible out there. Like I bring my Bible out there and I leave it on my desk in my room. There's other guys that have their Bibles in their rooms, you know. But this guy, he... I come into my room to, to tidy it up, do a little cleaning. And then there was a day, uh, a few hitches ago, there was a particular uh, set of, I guess it was a few days where there was a lot of rain out there. And so he needed to get with me to come get a, a slicker suit, you know, a rain suit. And so uh, I told him, and he works nights, I work days during the day. So I said, well, just, you know, I work late. So just when you come on, just come on over and I'll give it to you. So anyway, he comes over, I give him the, the rain jacket. And, um, he just, I don't know, he just stays and starts chatting with me a little bit. And he says, so I noticed that you have a Bible in your room. I said, yeah. He said, are you a Catholic or are you a born again? 
I said, I'm a born again. I said, I'm all about being born again. And uh, he said, okay. He said, my dad's a born again. He said, my sisters are born again. He said, but my mom's a Catholic. And my mom and dad have divorced. And I was raised by my mom. He said, I'm Catholic. He said, when I go to sleep at night, he said, I get really, really scared. He said, because I start thinking what is going to happen to me when I die. Come on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that not the power of the Holy Amen. Spirit dealing with the heart of a man? Wow. <laughs> like, Lord, you just brought this to me. What an awesome responsibility I have right here before me. Dear God. And so I said, well, there's a reason for that. I said, but I want you to know that John said these things I write to you that you may know that you have eternal life. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to cry at night before you go to sleep because you don't know. God wants to give you an assurance. God wants you to know. You can know. You can have this confidence. And I rolled right on into John chapter 3, you know, talking to him about Nicodemus and Jesus' conversation. And so, long story short, one thing about the Filipinos, my wife included, because she's an American. She's a Philan. She's an American <laughs> Filipino. We are your people. And so they are very, very into their work ethic. I mean, they are very serious. They're, every last one of them out there, everyone, there's not one that I could say sloughing off. You know, never, never. And so we had been talking for like maybe 10 minutes and I was trying to power pack, you know, as much as I could because I knew he wasn't going to stay long. He hadn't to work. And he said, I, I said, man, look, he said, well, first he said, he said, I'm going to I'm going to talk to my dad. He said, I'm going to talk to my dad. I'm going to talk to my dad. I said, yes, you need to talk to your dad. And I said, but you need to be born again. I said, we need to take care of this. He said, I got to go back to work. I said, okay, whenever I come on and you're, you get off, you come back to the warehouse and we'll take care of that. He said, okay. So I was like, Lord, please let him show up. So as soon as he got off, he came straight to the warehouse. And Thank I you. took a break and went to my room. And we sat down and I mean, we talked. And I, I you know, the Lord just helped me to explain it, you know, as, as good as I could. And, uh, and then we, we prayed together and, and this guy received the Lord. And so I'm just telling you, God wants to use us wherever we are. It doesn't matter. I mean, and one of the other guys in the Bible said the supervisor of that company, the, of the other guy that got saved, this guy, he's like, man, I mean, like, seriously, like this guy comes offshore to get saved. He goes to an offshore oil platform to get saved. He's been thinking about this for a year. You know, and, and God, I'm telling you. And that's what happened when they went out there for Mardi Gras. I mean, who would have ever expected that kind of response? I mean, I'm back there listening to this, and I'm like, man, even when we went to uh, New Orleans, you know, with Lance Rowe, it wasn't quite like that, you know? I mean, that's powerful. For young people to open up like that and to do that, do you realize, does that not give you more confidence? It gives me confidence. I and mean, it makes me feel really good about going out in the streets. Okay. And I'm just telling you, we have to have that confidence and know that when we go, he's going to use us. And if you feel shame and you feel any pride, that's exactly what I was wrestling with uh, when I went the first time with Lance and Morgan City. I was, I was really wrestling with pride. That's what it was. It was pride. Yeah. Oh, God. It was, it was so strong. And I'm still, at time, I'm still struggling with it. And, and the Lord, he, he had to break it. And, and so I just don't, I'm just telling you, I don't care what your personality is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Are you the shy type? Are you the bold type? It doesn't matter. Look, all that, erase, erase, erase. No, that's, that's junk. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. Don't put limits on what God can do and what he will do and what he wants to do with you. God will use you. And, and he, will, he will absolutely blow your own mind. He will. He will do it. So the guy that's the supervisor of that company, okay, the one that had invited him to come. And actually, he had invited both the, the Filipino guy that was saved and went to Saudi Arabia. And he was the one who also invited the one that wasn't saved, that got saved. Well, this guy, the supervisor, when he first started coming to the Bible study, this brother, he was, he was something, man. He was something, something serious. 
And so he was coming to the Bible study and he was fired up. He was so excited. Like he had just had a, a baby that was, I don't know, maybe six or seven months old. And he was living with his fiance and she already had another child from another relationship. And so uh, he comes in there and it just so happens the topic is the message of the cross, talking, you know, preaching on our new covenant in Christ, how to live for God, how to live free from sin. I mean, what, what better topic could there ever be in the word of God for this guy coming right in? And then so he's coming in and he's fired up. He's participating. He's interjecting. He's asking questions, making comments. And we first started to hear him call her his fiance. That's how it started. And then so after the first Bible study, one of the other guys comes to the warehouse and says, did you notice, did you notice that he started to call his fiance his wife? Like, it's like he's switching it up. And I said, well, no, I don't know. So anyway, what ended up happening was we had another Bible study and I, I heard, I was like, okay, wow, what's going on? So while, while we're all having, you know, having discussion with the Bible study in the back of my mind, I, I noticed the Holy Spirit speaking to me and he said, you need to confront this. You need to confront him. Like, really? Like, confront him? Awesome. You need to confront this. <laughs> Look, I, I can be a confrontational person when I'm bad, but I'm not bad right now. So <laughs> I don't know how this is going to go, you know? So, but I mean, the, the Holy Spirit was belaboring the point. You need to confront this. Do not let it get away. Do not let it. I'm telling you, he had my heart, and he was not going to let me get away so that that guy would get away. And so finally, I just said, man, I said, uh, can I ask you a very personal question? I want to make sure he knew it was going to be something deep and serious. It's about to get serious in here. I said, can I ask you a really personal question? He said, yeah, man, yeah, no problem, man. Go with anything, anything. I said, okay. I said, you said, uh, when I first met you, you were referring to this relationship as your fiance. And I said, I've noticed that even tonight in this Bible study, you're, you're calling her your wife. I said, is she your wife or is she your fiance? He put his head down and he said, she's my fiance. I said, look, I just want you to know this is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of freedom and liberty. And Jesus wants to set you free in such a way that you don't have to be led around like a dog on a chain. You can know that you are free because the Son has set you free. And you don't have to. You don't have to be underneath the weight of guilt and all that. And then so we just rolled on. I said, look, this is a circle of trust. All these guys here, I know that, you know, this is... This is for us to pray and to believe God with you that, that things are going to be right. So the next Bible study, we're having a lot of Bible studies at Hitch. The next Bible study, um, I was kind of leading the Bible study, and I'm going to tell you what, I, I only had like, I think maybe three and a half hours of sleep the night, that night, the night before. And uh, I was struggling, so like, you know, I'm, I'm rolling through it, and I, I, they can also, I know they could tell that I was struggling. I was really having a hard time. I was just so sleepy. And so finally, I was like, we get to the end. I said, okay, let's, let's pray. You know, I was like, I was so ready to get out of there. I was so sleepy. I was so tired. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to the Lord, but it is what it is. So we, we all went ahead, bowed our heads, and started to pray. And as we're praying, I'm like, I'm like, I'm seriously nodding off. I, I'm really like, okay, wait, wait, what did I just say? I got to pick right back up on that. This is going to be obvious. So finally, I make it through the prayer. I say amen. I look up. There he is across the table. Tears. I mean, his face is red, red, red. Tears just streaming down this guy's face. I mean, the Holy Spirit is all over him. I was too tired to even ask him. I'm sorry. But I just... So we went turn in, and then the next day he was out working in the field and he had hit his finger with a hammer. And then he comes to the warehouse, he busts in there like a whirlwind. And he said, man, I just hit my finger with a hammer and before I started 
blurting out all these words that I'm going to regret. I said, I'm going to talk to Aaron in the warehouse. <laughs> and so he just changed the subject and he said, man, he said, when you prayed that prayer last night, he said, that was the most convicting, anointed prayer. I was like, really? He said, How could this be? He said, I was so convicted. He said, when I left that Bible study, I went to my room. I picked up the phone. I called my wife. I told her, I said, you are sleeping in the bedroom when I get home, and I am sleeping on the sofa. And that's the way it's going to be until we get married. And that's the way it was. That's the way it was. They're married now. They're married now. And God is using this guy. I'm telling you, he's the one who's bringing a lot of these people in to come and have exposure to the Word of God. It's powerful. It's amazing. It's So... Like, he could be somewhere over, you know, in the distance. Like, I walk into the galley, and he's over on the other side of the galley, and I say, do you like this? He goes, yeah. <laughs> like, anytime I see him and say anything God related, it's like, <laughs> I mean, this guy is just so confident and so fired up. And he's one of those, it's almost like you, you ever have a new convert that you met, and like, every other word is Jesus, and they're loud, and, and they're proud of it. They're confident in it. They're not ashamed. And it's like when I walk into a room and he's there and I hear him talking about Jesus, I can just, I can hear those chains in the spirit on other people. I can hear him shaking. I'm like, yeah, get him, Lord, get him. Hallelujah. Make him feel so uncomfortable at the name of Jesus because it does make people uncomfortable when you do that. Especially when you talk out loud where they can really hear it good. Oh, man. There's such power with that name. Y'all saying with me?